Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can create a multi-column picker view control in SwiftUI. So let's say that we are building something that requires two different columns, uh, one for the number of hours in a day and the other for AM, PM. So how would we allow the user to select it? So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and begin with a VStack. Inside the VStack, I'm going to go ahead and begin with the picker control. The first thing I need to tell over here is the actual title. So I'm going to go ahead and say select time, or in this case, hour. Then I will go ahead and put selection, which basically means that when I select something from this picker control, it's going to go into this particular property. So I would say selected hour. This property does not really exist at that point. So I will go ahead and probably create it. So let's go ahead and try to create this property. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a state private var selected hour. And we're going to go ahead and say that this is the integer property and assign it zero to starting off. Let's go ahead and build it. Perfectly fine. We don't really see any display because we still have to say that what kind of a display we need. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and run a for each. And inside the for each, I can go ahead and go from hour from 1 till 12. And ID, which will be self. We're going to go ahead and get the hour or that particular item of the loop and go ahead and simply display it. Let's go ahead and see that how it actually displays. Try to go ahead and run that again. Oh, sorry. We're going to go ahead and put hour over here. Try to run it. And we'll see that if we can display one picker view control. OK, we can see it. Let's go ahead and run it. OK, so this allows us to go from 1 till 12. Perfect. Now the other picker view control that we want to create is for the AM and PM. You can create an array if you want. That's perfectly fine. Or you can go ahead and create an enum. I'm just going to go ahead and say time period. We'll have multiple time periods over here. We'll have AM and we'll have PM. In order to iterate through these things, I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is case iteratable. Now, I also want to expose some sort of a property that is going to get displayed or that I can display in our picker view. If I display this value, this is fine, but it's saying AM and PM in small. I want AM and PM in capital or uppercase. So I'm going to go ahead and create a property. I'm going to call it display text, which will be a string property. I can perform a switch on self, which in this case is time period. If the case is AM, this is one of the cases, then I'm going to go ahead and return. And I can return anything I want. I'm just going to return AM. If the case is PM, then I'm going to go ahead and return PM. Great. Now let's go back over here. Now the thing is that right now we have a picker view, which is kind of like taking up the whole screen or the width. In order to add another picker view, I have to go ahead and put this into a horizontal stack. Now I can go ahead and say picker, select period. Again, selection. So selection is going to go somewhere. I will say selected time period just to be more descriptive. Selected time period doesn't really exist. So we need to find a way to select the particular time period. So how can we do this? Well, we're going to go ahead and create another state property and say selected time period. This will be of type enum, which is the time period time period, and we can initialize it with AM, just so that it has some sort of a value. 
Once again, I'm going to go ahead and run for each. And since we mark our enum over here with case iterable, I can go ahead and say time period dot all cases and the ID, I can simply say self over here. I will get a time period in. And once again, it is now up to me whatever I want to display. So I'm going to say time period dot display text. Let's go ahead and reset our view to see how it appears. Okay, that's very good and very close. You can see that we are, we can see the, the time and we can change the AM to PM and PM to AM. That's pretty good, but it is cutting off a bit on the sides. So how can we fix that issue? Well, one of the ways you can fix this issue is by using something called a geometry reader. A geometry reader can give you the size of your parent control. So I can wrap up the parent control over here, geometry reader, and making sure where this ends, just wrap up everything inside geometry reader. And then we're going to get access to geometry object. And this is the one that we can use to select our frame, set a particular frame, the width and height for the picker control. So I'm going to say geometry dot size dot width divided by two or divided by three. And then some sort of a height you can give with, let's say, let's go with 100. Okay. And we can try to do the same exact thing for the different picker. Okay, they're getting good, they're getting close, but still we can see that they are, first of all, they're not centered. So if I need to center and everything is inside the edge stack, I can just add a spacer in edge stack and I can add another spacer at the end so that everything is like pushing them to the middle. And another thing I have to do is I need to clip out the access space. So let's go ahead and clip it out. And for the second one also, we'll clip it out. And now it looks actually pretty good, right? Let's go ahead and run this. You can see that I can select all of these hours and I can select AM and PM. As soon as I select these things, the selected time period and the selected hour, they are automatically being updated, whether they are AM or whether they are PM. So I think this is really cool that they are automatically be, being uh, binded, and as soon as I select, they are being updated. So there you have it. We can create two different pickers, which are a multi picker, two column, and we can make them look nice also so that they are not overlapping. Hope you like it. Thank you so much. If you want to support my videos, then check out my courses on Udemy. I have courses for Swift UI, Firebase. I even added brand new section for my MVVM design pattern course, how to make a complete weather application. And the same section was also added in my other courses, including the MVVM design pattern in Swift UI. So these are very, very popular courses. Check them out. I also have multiple Swift UI courses. This one, as you can see, it deals with Swift UI and Firebase. So this is a complete course. It covers authentication, it covers Firebase storage, it covers Firebase database, and a lot more. So that's the best way to support my videos. And please check out the links in the description. And if you use those links, uh, that will be really, really good because I will get a little bit higher revenue from Udemy. But uh, thank you so much for your continuous support.